Okay gang, so today in this video we're kind of going to tackle the first really big reaction that we're going to cover in OCHEM 2. And it's just a big reaction in general. So it's called the Deals Alder Reaction. So let me just kind of throw it up on here, we'll kind of look at it, dissect it, and then we'll kind of build off of it and I'll tell you where we're going to go with it. So looks a little, here's the most basic Deals Alder Reaction you can have. Okay, so, probably wondering like, whoa, Joe, where the hell did that come from? Or if you're not, good. So, let me just kind of label some terms. So right here we have a four carbon piece that has two double bonds. So we actually refer to this piece as a diene, right? Because di means two, ene means double bond. This is a structure that has two double bonds in it. Right here, this little two carbon piece right here, this is what we're going to refer as the dienophile. So similar to the, type of, the types of words we apply to nucleophile, electrophile, a dienophile is a lover of dienes, right? You see how that word kind of breaks down? So this guy loves to be attached to dienes, which is perfect because that's what we, this is the one piece we need for a Diels auto reaction. The diene is the other piece. So this is what's called a cyclo addition, a cyclo reaction, because these two pieces are going to combine together. One, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six, to produce this ring over here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So, like I said, this is the most basic Diels Alder reaction you're going to have, and this is kind of like the template. You're always going to have this piece possibly groups, not possibly, you will, most likely have groups coming off of it, you'll, but you'll always have this diene, you'll always have this dienophile with groups coming off of it, and you'll always produce this six-membered ring with a double bond between positions two and three. Um, so that's what you can always count on and expect. To show you kind of how the arrows flow, this arrow, so I'm going to draw an arrow from this double bond, it's going to attach to this double bond right here, the double bond in this in the dienophile is going to come over and attach to the, the carbon at position four. And since this double bond has to move somewhere, he's going to get kicked up right there. Okay. So yes, this is all good. It's a nice little introduction, but I want to kind of take it to the next level. What we can kind of do is take uh, other groups, put them on various positions on the diene various positions on the dienophile, and this can kind of speed up our reaction and also make much more interesting products for us. So I'm going to pause this, erase, and then we'll get right into that. Okay, so before we kind of get into attaching groups, I want to show you where those arrows came from that helped produce the six-membered ring I had just shown you. Okay, so I told you that the arrow came from over here, this carbon, number one, attached to this carbon over here. The double bond over here came over and attached to this carbon. And then this double bond kicked up to make the double bond we see in the structure. Okay, let me just kind of erase these. And then I'll kind of show you, because there's an electronic reason, there's a charge reason as to why those arrows go the way they go. All right. So, let me draw some resonance for you guys. I'm just going to draw it down like this for both structures. Okay, so we saw one arrow stemming from this carbon to go to this carbon. So let's just say if I drew resonance, this bond going down, and if I make the double bond here, this carbon has to kick up right there. Right, so my double bond's in the middle right here. I have a positive charge down here, and since I kicked a negative pair of electrons up there, we have a negative charge on the top carbon. At the same time, if I was to take this double bond and swing the electrons down like this. So basically, I'm going to leave this carbon without the double bond, or the electrons from the double bond, and this carbon at the bottom will receive them. We're going to have this situation going on. The top carbon gets a plus charge, and the bottom carbon gets a negative charge. So now, the arrows kind of make a little more sense, right? I can still draw the exact same arrows. Right, we had this attaching there, this electron, these electrons going here, and this guy kicking up. Now, you can see that exact same flow. 
these electrons are going from the negative carbon are going to attach to the positive carbon right there, bearing that positive charge. And then these negative electrons are going to come over and attach to the positive charge at the bottom of the diene. And you can see we don't have to move the double bond. So you can see that this reaction is fueled by an, elect, uh, an electronic difference, electrons moving towards negative charges to positive. Okay, hopefully that made sense. But like I said, this is a very bland type of diels alder reaction because we don't have any groups attached. Well, we can easily spice that up with no problem at all. Okay, so let me redraw our stock templates for our diene and our dienophile. Okay. So the way this works is that you put groups on the diene that donate electrons. These are called electron donating groups, or EDGs. On the, diene, on the dienophile, you put groups on that are called electron withdrawing groups. And I'll totally make sense of why you do this in just a second. Let me just give you an example. It's always easier with an example, right? So if I put a methoxy group on this diene, right, an OCH3. And let's just say for fun, I put an aldehyde on the dienophile, right? Diene, dienophile, we got a methoxy group and an electron withdrawing group. The key is to always look at the atom directly attached to your system, right? So if my diene is my system, directly attached to it, I see I have an electronegative carbon with electrons, right? He is so okay with swinging these electrons into the system and donating his electron density, right? So let me just kind of draw a resonance structure for you. So if I swing these electrons down, I need to then swing these electrons to the middle, and I need to swing these electrons down to the bottom. So I would have this structure. OCH3, oxygen has a positive charge. I have a uh, double bond right there, and an electron pair down here, okay. So now if I look at this electron withdrawing group on the dienophile, let's draw some resonance. Directly off of my dienophile system, I see I have a carbon, but not just any carbon. He has a partial positive charge, right? So the way I'm going to draw resonance is I'm actually going to swing electrons up towards that partial positive carbon because he's going to withdraw electron density from our system, and then I'll kick electrons up to that oxygen right there. Draw the resonance. We have double bond right here, an O minus up top, and an H over here. And more importantly, we have a positive charge down there. Okay, so you can see from the initial diels alder reaction that we did, we were matching up our charges, right? So whenever we stick groups on our diene and dienophile, we kind of induce these charges at certain positions, right? And it helps make the reaction go faster and we make more interesting products, right? So if I'm going to, so we can see that our negative and positive charge are lined up. If I was to predict this product for you guys, I could just go ahead and do it, right? On the other hand, let me give you a different example. Whoops. What if I were to have some type of situation where I had this, an amine at the bottom of my diene and the same type of dienophile up top, right? Well, let's draw some resonance and you'll see that there's a little bit of, a, of an issue. We swing these electrons in, I because he's an electron donating group, right? He's an EDG because directly attached to my system, I have an electronegative atom with electrons to give. These electrons would swing over here and these would swing up top, right? So you can clearly see that I'm going to have a negative charge at the top of my structure. Positive charge on nitrogen, double bond right there, negative charge up top. Well, we just drew the resonance for this structure over here, right? We'd swing electrons over here, and these would kick up. So I would have a positive charge at the bottom, and then I would have the resultant over here. So you can see now that these charges do not match up, right? Because we know our ring is going to form like this. However, these charges do not match up. So in the next video, I kind of wanted to just show you how you can alter your diene and dienophile. In the next video, we're going to get to pre actually predicting deals alder products. But one thing you have to consider 
is that you have to make sure your electron donating groups on your diene and your electron withdrawing groups on your dienophile kind of induce charges that match up. Because we couldn't predict this product, what we'd have to do is flip our diene and then predict our product. So hopefully you kind of understood that. I'm kind of explaining this in a way that most teachers don't, I don't think, or at least I, was, I wasn't taught this way. So let's get to predicting the product.